Hey guys, it's Jay. So whether you consider esports to be actual sports or not is not really important to this conversation. The fact is, competitive gaming is a competitive event, and the leagues like the CWL are competitive leagues, and the draw to them is the same thing that draws people to any competition, whether it's a cerebral competition like chess or poker, or it's a physical competition like baseball or basketball, the draw of it is the same, the the uh, drama of not knowing who's going to win and getting a sense of the desire to win in the competitors that you feed on or just being able to watch someone do something that you do at a casual level at a much higher level than most people can do it or just the intensity of the competition itself. It's very, very similar to what we see in are pro leagues like the NFL, the NBA, or the NHL, etc. And it's been made abundantly clear that Activision really wants Call of Duty to reach the highest peaks of the esports community, which they're currently not at. When you think of esports, you think of things like League of Legends, which gets tens of millions of viewers, or even just in the shooter genre alone, you have CSGO, which now has an actual television contract with TBS, and they did not get that by not being the biggest shooter in esports, and that's what Call of Duty wants to be, and they may have gone as far as to overtake something like Halo, which has fallen from grace pretty hard recently, but they still are not where they want to be, and the question becomes, how do you get there? Because so far they've done everything that seems to make sense to do. They designed a game that is based, in my opinion, 95% around the competitive community, introduced a new aspect to the game and the ban and protect system. They've created a league in the CWL that, in my opinion, is the best version of competitive Call of Duty ever. All I've heard about uh, since the CWL started was how important land tournaments are and how land tournaments are the real draw and the, the big deal. And I've seen three LAN tournaments now, and so far the CWL on a weekly basis is be far beyond better than what the LAN tournaments are every couple months. And so, you know, the CWL really has a lot of things working for it. They even, you know, hired the former president of ESPN to run it, and, and it makes you wonder why isn't it working? Why are they not getting you know, CSGO viewership numbers, and of course a lot of it is just it's new and people have to find it. You know, C uh, CSGO has been around for for decade or 15 years or so, and the Call of Duty community just recently started trying to become a, a legitimate esport, but that, I don't think that's all there is to it, because when you look at the other sports, the, the real competition, the big four, like the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, and the MLB, it's pretty easy to see where they really launch themselves up into big time status, and even as they start falling off, they use the same uh, fundamentals to build themselves back up into big leagues. And the formula is simple. It's juggernauts battling for the championship. Every form of fan revolves around juggernauts battling for the championship. Whether it's the Steelers and Dolphins of the 70s, or it's the uh, Broncos and Bears of the 80s, or it's the... Niners and Cowboys of the 90s, or it's Manning and Brady in 2000. It always revolves around juggernauts, so kind of like you know the the Magic Johnson Lakers versus the Larry Bird Celtics, or the uh, Yankees and Red Sox. You pick the era. Those are what builds leagues. Those massive juggernaut teams that seem unbeatable. And what they do is they create multiple different types of fans because whether you watch them because you love them and want to see them win or you watch them because you hate them and want to see them lose, the fact is you're still watching them. And then you get the Cinderella teams, the teams that aren't really up in their class, but they manage to knock them off. And, and then you develop a fandom for those teams. And, and you know, I'm more of the, the latter. I'm, I'm not actually a phase or optic fan. What I am is 
I like Rise and Elevate, the teams that have the talent and ability to win a championship but are not expected to, are still considered underdogs. But uh, as a fan of them, I understand the necessity for teams like FaZe and Optic, just like as a fan of the Royals or the Eagles, I understand the necessity for teams like the Patriots and the Steelers and the Red Sox and Yankees. So let's talk about FaZe for a while. I bring up FaZe and Optic as the two juggernaut teams for one simple reason, and that is because they are by far and away the most popular teams. If you ask every single person who has ever turned on a Call of Duty to name a professional Call of Duty team, 90% of them are going to say FaZe or Optic. And the reason is because FaZe and Optic have the largest uh, YouTube following. In fact, if you ask all the people who claim to be FaZe fans who their favorite member of FaZe is, they'll probably say something like Rain, who is not even on the FaZe roster, or the FaZe competitive roster. Or if you ask everybody who's a fan of Optic, who is your favorite member of Optic, they'll probably say something like Pomage, who again is not even part of the professional roster. The fact is that, you know, FaZe and Optic transcend the sport, kind of like how Michael Jordan transcended basketball. You did not have to be a fan of basketball to know the name Michael Jordan. Or Hulk Hogan transcends the uh, WWF. Or Babe Ruth and baseball. Like, you don't have to be a fan of their their sport to be a fan of them or to at least know who they are. That is huge for the CWL and it bears out in the numbers. When FaZe and Optic were considered the two juggernaut teams that were unbeatable at the top of their game, their match together gained, I be- I heard the number was over 80,000 viewers. And when you consider that the average viewership of the CWL is between 30 and 40,000 viewers, that's a pretty significant number. You, uh, you have FaZe and Optic going against each other, and your viewership is literally twice as large as your typical viewer numbers. And that's what it's all about. It's about getting viewers. It's about getting the ratings and getting noticed by non-esports people and furthering your status in the world, kind of like CSGO has done by getting itself a contract with TBS. And I don't want to be a conspiracy theory tinfoil hat wearing crazy person, and I'm not saying that there's actually a conspiracy against FaZe, but there are some things I've noticed this year that kind of point that direction, like somebody in the CWL doesn't like someone in FaZe or something to that extent. And what I'm talking about is uh, FaZe has been treated a little bit differently than most of the other teams in the CWL. For example, a few weeks ago, FaZe plays Elevate and they lose the match 3-1. to one. And it turns out that FaZe was basically playing 3v4 against Elevate. They had a player lag out pretty much every single game of that series. The the one win that they had was an uplink, and that was the only game that they got to finish 4v4. In the search and destroy of that game, they actually had lost one of their main players and had to use a substitute, and then another one of their main players lags out, and so they're playing 3v4 with a substitute as one of the three. And this wouldn't be such a big deal, except I've also seen it go the opposite direction for other teams. I believe that this last week when Elevate played Envy, Elevate had a player lag out during their search and destroy, and they stopped the game and restarted it so that they could get that player back. Now, I don't know if there's something going on behind the scenes, like maybe the two teams agreed to go ahead and and start over, or, or what's going on, but that is definitely a difference of handling of the situation. When phase lags out, they say, too bad, play 3v4. When Elevate lags out, they say, oh, that's too bad, we'll go ahead and start over again. I'm not saying that they're doing it to phase. I'm just saying that that has happened multiple times to phase. Like phase has has had multiple games where they were 3v4 and not allowed to start over while other teams get the restart most of the time. And then there's the whole forfeiting a match. I mean, phase is up five rounds to two in game five and then they forfeit the match because one of them uses a 
a glitch spot. I mean, I can kind of understand that. He cheated, but at the same time, they were winning five rounds to two. It's not like they wouldn't have won the game anyway, and at the very least, they could have done a replay, but they didn't. And FaZe has had kind of a roller coaster season where they look unbeatable and then they look like a very below average team and they're finally starting to climb up into the ranks of the unbeatable again but this is important for the CWL because the CWL needs phase a lot more than phase needs the CWL and as a fan of the CWL, even though I'm not a fan of FaZe, I would really like to start seeing them treated a little bit more equally to the other teams because I want the CWL to succeed. I want there to be a CWL next year. And I want people to catch on and start watching and really enjoying it. And without a phase, all you have is Optic. And I guess having just a Tiger Woods actually helped golf quite a bit, and having just a Wayne Gretzky helped the NHL quite a bit, but neither of those sports is on the level of Major League Baseball, the NBA, or NFL. And I'm not saying it's entirely due to the fact that there's no serious competition at the top of the mountain, but I think that that has a a lot to do with it. So thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And goodbye.